What's going on there guys? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this beautiful Tuesday morning, May 3rd, 2022, about 8.16 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 3.0 somewhat deep here into the South America region. Let's go ahead and check out some uh, activity to chat about this morning, including a X flare that just kicked off here a short time ago. I want to show you guys here on the space weather overview. Uh, from the folks there at the Space Weather Prediction Center. Had an X 1.1 flare kickoff just a short time ago. I noticed I had some issues with my uh, my computer here about that time when that uh, flare did kick off. Pretty strong flare. In fact, this was uh, not really expected. As far as folks trying to predict this stuff, I'm not a predictor of solar flares or solar weather, so we looked to the Space Weather Prediction Center folks, and they were... Uh, Pretty much only uh, predicting a less than a one percent chance of an X flare. So this uh, flare, I believe, is coming from the southeastern limb over here. That's kind of been trying to access this image, but uh, for some reason I cannot get that to pull up. But uh, looks like it's the likely culprit. This new regional sunspot over here, I believe, it's unnamed currently. Not a whole lot of uh, uh, potentials far as producing the X flare, at least Earth side anyway, that I see her here on this disc. So I'm thinking it's the southeastern uh, limb over there producing that uh, new solar flare and looking at this, it kind of gives us a little glimpse here of what we uh, uh, can't see on the Earth side. It's a little bit, a little bit more. And that looks like the culprit in producing this X flare. Again, a one point, uh, 1.1 let me check the other site here space weather uh i can check numerous space weather sites but this one here is kind of a, uh, a easy to go to one uh x class solar flare earth orbiting satellites have just detected an x 1.1 class solar flare uh, the source is a new unnumbered sunspot and this one's emerging over the sun's southeastern limb so there we go that uh that is it pretty cool it's already given us an X flare and it's uh, it hasn't even really fully developed so we could be getting into some very interesting um, days ahead just wish I could get this uh, this image to pop up but I'll keep checking on it uh, but for now an X 1.1 flare kicking things up it did I'm sure it created somewhat of a uh, radio blackout on the lit side of the earth sunlit side I should say Looking at general earthquake activity, we'll check the space weather back here in a minute. Uh, looking at earthquake activity this morning. I know it's kind of early for an update, but you know what? Uh, I had to fix the stream up a little bit because a couple programs crashed. And it's just weird. Uh, looking at the west coast, some movement just coming in here within the last hour, including a 2.6 outside of Riverside. This is on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. On the uh, west side, of course, here of the San Andreas Fault. Also some movement down here around the Salton City area, the western side of the Salton Sea region. We don't see too much activity generally on this region, but um, still, uh, this is this guy, girl, however you want to pronounce it, this thing, this uh, San Andreas Fault down here, definitely capable of uh, uh, releasing quite a bit of stress. And it's, it's the, sp the spring, basically what I'm trying to say, the spring down here is wo wound so tight, we definitely have to... Um, be cautious with that. I have a feeling it's coming very soon. Uh, as far as the activity up here around the, uh, oh, that volcanic dome up here around uh, Monache, Monache Mountain. Only one earthquake here, and that was from uh, yesterday afternoon. So we haven't seen any further uptick here in this area. But notice a trail of movement here going across the Coso Volcanic Range uh, into the Rose Valley. Uh, in that area a lot like I say a lot of uh, older volcanic features out there uh, but it's still within that area where the uh, ridge crest ridge crest uh, fracture zone was back in 2019 when we had that series of earthquakes there in early July uh, as far as the rest of the activity down here in Southern Cal a little bit of spotty movement around the San Jacinto fault zone and uh, a little bit over here around Los Angeles up here to the center part of the state not a whole lot going on throughout the Bay Area. Still got some mount, uh, some activity around the Cobb Mountain area. Uh, a lot of people keen up about this. Uh, I know for a fact what's up there. 
I've been up there myself. I've done my research and I'm not going to adhere to the trolls on some of the comments about that. Uh, up here in the Grass Valley area, south of Quincy, it's actually well north of Grass Valley, it looks like, uh, in the Sierra Nevada, 2.3 at 12 kilometers into that area. And of course, this movement here in uh, Orland yesterday, pretty deep activity, 28 kilometer depth for that 2.2, uh, right along the Great Valley Fault Thrust Area. That's going to be this, can't really see it here on this map, but there's definitely a fault system that runs right through here on the west side of the valley. Uh, no further subsequent movement up here around the Eureka area. Just that 2.5, pretty deep movement there at the southern end of the Cascadia. And uh, a little bit of activity throughout the Washington region. Uh, starting to notice, though, seeing an inland pressure, kind of like a wave, if you will. We notice these uh, earthquakes kind of pop up here along the west coast, and we notice that wave fashion kind of extend into the North American plate. And we're kind of seeing an uptick in that movement today uh, throughout the Utah region and into Wyoming and Idaho, up into Montana as well. Uh, getting a little swarming out here outside of Jackson, Wyoming. Kelly, Wyoming area, beautiful region. A couple twos and some ones kicking off here at uh, some of them down to about nine kilometers there below the surface for those earthquakes. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Yellowstone here real quick while I'm on it. I don't know if any of these are gonna be showing up there in the in that area. Yeah, it looks like uh, the Kind of looks like the two-pointer did, possibly. But as uh, far as local seismic activity goes here at the park, I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement today, folks, at all. Uh, getting back here to the USGS map. Uh, starting to notice some movement in Texas once again. A couple twos out there around, around the uh, Pecos, Texas area. And up here in Oklahoma, South of Enid, uh, a couple earthquakes in a little swarm fashion. We'll go ahead and zoom in here into the uh, Hennessy oil and gas fields, okay? Just outside of the town of Hennessy. Uh, satellite view, we'll go ahead and check this out. Can't hide from the satellites out there, right? They're all above us. And they're watching us almost 24 seven. And uh, no doubt, if you don't know, looking at all these little squares out here, little pumping operations those are not beautiful farmhouses those are uh, uh, quite a few operations old and new in the oil fields and it says it's strictly right here on the map Hennessy oil and gas fields throughout this area where these earthquakes are striking down there about uh, between five and seven kilometers for those quakes inland pressure inland movement hitting those weak spots out there for sure um, nothing on the New Madrid zone yet or the eastern part of the country uh, we'll see how that changes throughout the day. Low activity throughout Puerto Rico, Costa Rica area, and also into South America where we're seeing some further deep movement here into the subduction zone. Still got to watch the strain. Uh, a lot of people don't believe in the uh, hundreds of miles, thousands of miles away uh, domino effect. Uh, but when we're looking at further strain here, deep down into the subduction zone, it's ultimately applying pressure. doesn't matter if it's five miles a thousand miles if you get a set up a subduction zone like this it's ultimately applying back building pressure and strain and you got a picture of the earth like it is right here right it's only a, a few large pieces of land and uh moving around on some liquid uh, not the water but uh underneath um it's uh kind of like a giant eggshell if you will pieces that are cracked but they're not really fused together they move at will all the time so when you get such a huge plate such as a pacific plate even making a little minor adjustment here to the west you get the uh, we'll cover that a little bit later tonight i'll bring in the uh, plate tectonics movement map show you guys the direction of these plates and uh where they all move to and there's we we're not guessing on that we know that for a fact because there's gps uh, stations all over this planet now that measure the the uh, general movement of the plates uh, but anyway, getting back to it, though, if we get even a little adjustment here on the western part of the plate, it ultimately affects all these plates over here that are kind of back behind it and the adjacent plates. So uh, to, to disregard that aspect is uh, definitely not good. The trolls were out in full force uh, over the past couple days. But that's all good, right? It's all good. 
Uh, getting a little cluster down here into the Tonga region once again. All four of these earthquakes. Look over here. Holy smokes. Some deep movement taking place here in the Fiji Islands area. And uh, still no subsequent large scale movement in the Kermadec Trench. Yes, we did have 5.5, but uh, I still think uh, that's not sufficient enough. Uh, considering now that we've seen this deeper movement uh, in that region. Got to watch that area pretty closely. Some activity outside of the Philippines. And uh, one earthquake here around Iran. Also got some earthquake activity over here. <clears throat> uh, not for sure if this is at the volcano. Actually, it looks like it's just offshore uh, with a 4.0. Oh, to look back into that and see what that is out there but uh, let's see what else we got here checking that solar weather again I cannot get that um, image to pop up so we'll just keep checking back that kind of looks like a long duration X flare for sure that kicked off this morning X 1.1 once again um, and notice it's ramping up got quite a few C flares uh, overnight and an M flare now an X flare and once again, this is from the regional sunspot, an unnamed sunspot out here that's growing rapidly and crackling with all these flares and, and including this morning's X flare. So going to watch that pretty closely uh, uh, throughout the day today. And of course, as the coming days bring it uh, within Earth view, these other spon sunspots don't have a lot of potential, folks. That's kind of why these guys, at least these guys, uh, forecasting less than a 1% chance of an X flare. And M flare was only a 10% chance, so you know the sun's uh, the sun surprises us quite a bit, and I like it. I do love these little surprises. So we'll see what else it's got in store as the uh, uh, the day unfolds and the week continues. So all right, guys, I'm gonna jump off here. Hope everyone has a good day. We will be monitoring the activity. If anything else changes, uh, of course, we'll be on here with an update ASAP. Uh, if not, then we'll see you guys back here tonight around 6 or 7 p.m. California time. Most likely around the 6 o'clock, well, yeah, 6 o'clock time frame, West Coast time for the uh, nightly update tonight. So take care, guys. Stay safe out there. We will chat you later. Live stream is up and running, solid and strong. We'll chat you guys pretty soon.